Welcome back, everyone, to Freaky Tales Podcast. And today is Friday, episode 72. And I want to thank everybody on the live chat, everybody who commenting, everybody who's liking, who's disliking. It doesn't matter. You guys are still watching. And those of you guys who have decided not to be on the live chat, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Whether you're watching live or whether you're watching later on or tonight or tomorrow, um, I want to thank you guys for being a part of the show. If you guys missed last night, we had our double header. I've been going live on Freaky Tales uh, twice a week, like I said, and I gave my word that I would. So today we end the Oktoberfest, if you will. Okay. So I want to thank you guys for uh, uh, being, a, uh, being a good sport and uh, tuning in with me. Uh, last night was really, really good. For those of you guys that didn't tap in last night, we talked about the topic was Freaky Dreams. Freaky Dreams. Um, and the dreams that I've talked about were dreams that sometimes impact our lives. Uh, I've had prophetic dreams. I've had dreams that have stuck with me. Some have blessed me. Some have uh, stuck with me in a negative sense. You know, uh, we talked about do dreams have interpretations? Uh, I believe so. Some dreams are just dreams. Do dreams mean something? So that was our topic from last night. If uh, you guys didn't get a chance to watch, I think that's, you guys will definitely definitely enjoy that uh a couple of previous topics that we discussed before when i had marvelous here we talked about bigfoot that one was really entertaining because a lot of you callers were really really educated in that topic of actually bigfoot and uh ufos unidentified flying saucers um other than that i know we talked about other different topics it doesn't come to mind but all you got to do is go down the uh, Freaky Tales catalog and you'll be able to see everything that we talked about for the month of October. So now um, I want to bring something up because Tuesday is Halloween. Okay. For me, you know, Thanksgiving, obviously all month is Thanksgiving for me. I, I, I It's just a beautiful holiday for me. Christmas, the month of uh, December, you can actually start cel even celebrating or decorating for Christmas for November, December beautiful holidays but for me halloween has always been very special because that's just always been my thing uh so i celebrate pretty much halloween from september to october so i get like two months uh full of either decorations or just talking about it especially having a paranormal uh podcast um but i do want to shout out also um those that are become members i want to thank you guys we we are going to still continue to release content every month i mean every week not every month every week so i want to thank you guys for uh becoming members i want to thank you guys for being faithful subscribers and for liking and sharing i get so many people that still dm me and says hey man i just got put on to freaky tales like three weeks ago and i'm hooked so i also want to welcome uh the new subscribers the new viewers and also want to welcome those that are on rumble i believe we're on still rumble tonight right alex yes so welcome everybody that's on rumble but Tuesday is Halloween. I always decorate it. Uh, I used to do it for, uh, when I say decorate, decorate my backyard like a graveyard. I have a lot of, uh, uh, if you will, um, Halloween decorations, a lot of Halloween ornaments that I hang up. I used to do it for uh, my children, but they're all grown up now, but now I do it for their children, which are my grandbabies. I got family flying in. We're going to have a great time here celebrating, you know, uh, something I, I look at it more as that it's free candy for the kids. So uh, it's a beautiful thing when you meet people that have come from a different country and they, they actually ask you, wow, they actually give you candy. Yeah. Just go to the door. Just go say, you know, happy Halloween. They'll give you, yes, they'll give you free candy. Like, because in their country, they don't do stuff like this. So I, I, that's why I really enjoy the holidays. But you know what? I want to bring up a picture of me. And Alex, if you could bring that up. Uh, this is a picture of me, my very first costume. And I believe I was probably two years old, if probably around two years old. And uh, my mom used to dress me all the time. Uh, com coming from, you know, a Mexican family, uh, uh, my mom, who used to, cut and sew you know dresses and boys clothes and all kinds of clothes she used to make our clothes when we were young 
and uh, she used to make all of our Halloween costumes. So the homemade Halloween costumes to me have always been the best, even though all my friends at school used to buy those plastic Halloween masks and plastic Halloween costumes that used to come in a box that you used to buy either like at Thrifties or a store like that. I don't even know if Thrifties even exist anymore, but I, there may be one or two. I guess that was our uh, CVS back then. But we used to have the homemade costumes. And for like three years in a row, my mom dressed me como el diablo, the devil. So that's me right there. I'm, I'm assuming I was around two years old. So uh, today what I want to do is... um. I want to do something a little bit different. I put together some questions. And when we open up the phone lines, I want the callers to call me if you got a freaky tale or if you want me to ask you a freaky question. Okay. Nothing out of the ordinary, but it's um, almost like a horror type of question that I would like to ask the caller. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine. Or if you just want to share your freaky tale, go for it. If you have a story, that is uh, surrounding maybe something happened on Halloween leading up to Halloween or maybe the month of October, I think you guys uh, should call, share that story. I'm sure we will all love to hear it. Uh, if you don't celebrate Halloween, I get it. I understand it. You guys are just tuning in to Freaky Tales to enjoy the show. Uh, and I hope you truly, truly enjoy. Now, um, I was supposed to have a guest um, but we haven't been able to work around each other's schedule. So I do plan to bring this person back in. But what I'm going to do, since this person couldn't be here, I'm going to call this person and I need to ask this person a question. The reason why I'm asking this person a question is because this person was a, a mortician. She actually worked on dead bodies and sitting and talking to her. And I continue to ask her so many different questions that a mortician goes through like it's it's unbelievable the things that they have seen so this is going to be my very first caller okay so bear with me i have one question that i want to ask um, this person and you are probably going to be blown away because many of you probably have never known that these things happen in caskets Yes, I said it correctly, in caskets. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this phone call. And then after that, um, we're going to open up the phone lines, okay? So you can take down the picture now. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and tell me when I'm plugged in as far as to, um, to make that call. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Our very first caller. You guys are going to like this one. Okay. Oh. Hello. Hello. Is this um, hey. Magic Girl, a.k.a. Genesis? Yes, it is. Well, you know what? I am glad that I got you on the phone because um, once again, you were a mortician for how long? For six years. For six years now, do you ever plan on going back into that industry? Um, I do actually. I am not too far away from obtaining my license, and um, I do want to go back. But um, things happen, COVID happened, and thankfully, I was blessed to be able to start my own business. So I've been have I've been given the privilege to work from home. So until things slow down, I think I'll you know, keep running the business. Now, now, you know what? Um, it, it, is, there, is there good money in the mortician business? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it, it is very, very good money. And if you got the stomach for it, um, you can retire and, and live a very, very good life. Um, I was making very, very good money working there. I can't complain. Um, it's just with, um, the, the high demand and, you know, um, having to be there sometimes, you know, 24 hours a day and being on call 24 hours a day, it's just overwhelming. And then mixing that with, you know, doing music and, and having to travel with the music career and all that stuff, it just didn't, you know, it didn't sit well. So I had to choose one or the other. And ultimately, you know, I decided that I wanted to pursue my music career and, okay. you know, leave that for a little later. 
Now, uh, if I'm correct, I know you've already did some recording on your up and coming podcast. Do you mind telling us, kind of giving us an idea of the name of the podcast and what's it going to be about? Because I know it's very different. A lot of people are not going to expect this from you. And that's why I needed to make you my number one caller tonight. So please fill us in. Yes. So, um, I do have a new podcast. I know everybody's been waiting for it. Um, unfortunately, there were some personal things that I needed to attend to this year that were uh, that needed to be a priority. So we had to put everything on hold, including my album for a little bit, because I know um, you're helping me with my album. So we had to put a lot of things on hold this year. Um, but thankfully, everything is good. And um, my podcast is actually going to be about everything funeral related. So, um, anybody um, who has like questions uh, or stories about um, maybe when they went to a funeral home or, you know, we're at a loved one's funeral. Um, but I'm also going to be telling my personal stories about my experience working um, at the funeral home as a mortician. So, um, it's going to, it's very exciting. It's something new and it's something different because there's not a lot of people educating um, the public with what the funeral industry is today because things have changed a lot and um the way how fast uh, society is moving um so does the funeral industry like things you would never think would happen are happening now in the funeral industry like uh for example um tr traditional viewings are held at a church right yes a church or a chapel okay so now check this out there are some funeral homes in uh, kansas and other states that are now allowing and I know this sounds kind of funny, and I'm trying to be very sensitive, um, <clears throat> but they're allowing um, to have drive-through viewing. Oh, wow. Where they will put your loved one in a clear, um, in a full, like, long, thick, clear glass, and you can pull up and view your loved one and drive off. Wow. But not only that, they're also doing a curbside viewing as well. That is exactly what you think it is. The funeral home brings your loved one in um, in a special vehicle, which is like a van. They park it outside of the location where where the where the loved one wants to be viewed, or someone's house, or somebody who's immobile. And the family can come outside, walk into the van, view their loved one, go back inside, and the the car drives off to the next location. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's start right there because I want you to say this for your podcast. Okay, do you, do you want to give away the name yet or not not yet? No, not yet, not yet. Okay, okay. I know you still I know we still got to finish up your record. I know your record's most likely going to be dropping in January. Yeah. Um I know possibly your podcast could be dropping in January cuz a lot of things got pulled pushed back. I get it, but it's going to be very exciting. But I do have one question and I know you're going to be tackling this subject when yeah. you uh you know start going live on your podcast, okay? Now, I've heard this, and I don't know if this is true, but I needed to ask someone who's in the, the industry. Uh -huh. is, is there such thing as exploding caskets? And I said that correctly, exploding <coughs> caskets. Yes, absolutely. And the correct proper term for that is exploding casket syndrome. And I know it sounds weird, um, but there's actually a lot of... Um, Things that happen like that. So generally when, when um, a casket explodes, it doesn't disintegrate into a thousand pieces. Okay? So I'll explain it from the top to bottom. Um, um, when um, exploding casket syndrome happens, it generally takes place in a crypt mausoleum. Okay? Mm. Um, there's a big difference between a crypt and a crypt mausoleum. And this is important. A crypt mausoleum is actually a building above ground, and a crypt can be um, a tomb that, you know, is possibly underground and, you know, like old uh, Catholic churches where you can walk in a basement and there's crypts. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so that generally doesn't happen in the crypt. It's always in the crypt mausoleum. Okay. So what, what a crypt mausoleum is, it's basically an above ground burial space inside of a wall. And usually the mausoleums are built to have like angle floors and and uh, proper ventilation, but what and and actually a good drainage system. But what happens is is that in most cases when this happens, it's in the 
older crypt mausoleums, like in the older funeral homes that were built maybe like before, you know, the 1970s and above, like the older ones, yes. because their 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 um, engineering wasn't that advanced. You know what I'm saying? So it was mm. their drainage systems were very basic. So um, I know people are probably asking, well, how does it how does it happen? It's because most mausoleums require a metal sealed protective casket. And I know when people purchase it, okay, in their minds they're like, okay, a protective casket is going to protect the body. That doesn't always happen. And so it, it kind of just takes the smell of decomposition away. Oh, okay. But, yeah, so all it does is help contain the odor. However, an airtight casket um, that is like air sealed um, can prevent the body from dehydrating. And that's when exploding casket syndrome happens because oh. it, when the when the body can't dehydrate, um, it builds up gas over time in the casket, and you basically um, you liquefy, and your body generally just becomes human soup. Did I hear you right? Human soup. Yes, that is the best way to describe it. You turn into human soup. And, oh wow. And over time, the, the casket w t explodes open, or how does that happen? Or Yeah, so <clears throat> after the, the casket builds gas up over time, um, the casket syndrome happens, and it's actually a real thing. And it doesn't mean that, like, like I said, it doesn't mean that the casket actually explodes into a thousand pieces. Okay. It means that there's, there's just so much gas, and, um, and uh, gas is building up inside of the casket that it eventually blows the top off of the casket. Oh, wow. And, and the force can be so extreme where it'll blow um, the entrance of the crypt. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's like to give, you a, to give you a mental picture, and I don't mean to cut you off, I'm sorry. You know when you grab a soda bottle and you shake it and it just starts, the gas starts to build up inside? Yes. And then you throw it on the floor and it just pops? Yes. So that's basically what happens in the casket with these air sealed um, caskets is that there's no there's no ventilation in that casket. So with your your body just naturally de decomposing and all these gases building, you basically become like a soda pop bottle getting ready to explode. Wow. OK, I, I don't want to ask you too much because I wanted you to save it for your podcast because I know you're going to give us pictures and more detail. But last thing, <laughs> have yeah. you ever seen this human soup? Yes, I have. Oh, wow. Yes, I have. And um, <clears throat> it's not it's not um, an easy sight to see. And generally what the cleanup is, is obviously the fluids get disposed of. And um, whatever part of the body is still intact, which whether it be like a piece of skin or bone or whatever it is, um, those um, get respectfully put in a new container and then place back inside the crypt with the appropriate a casket that has the appropriate ventilation. Wow. Yeah, because there's the, not only is there casket, um, exploding casket syndrome, but there's also something similar that's called, um, <clears throat> sorry, I have like my throat is right. It's um, a burp burping casket. Oh, wow. And I, know, and I know it sounds funny, but these are the terms we use because they're they're as close as to describe what's happening, right? So what a burp, burping casket is is when it has a certain type of liner that allows the body to breathe. Mm. So it generally, like over time, you could hear the like the air releasing oh, from wow. the casket. So they call it a burping casket. Okay, well, so there's well, a lot of things. Yes, I was going to say we'll start right there because I don't want you to give away your whole podcast tonight. But uh, uh, I want to thank you for accepting my call, for accepting my question. We're going to get to other callers, but thank you very, very much. And what is your YouTube once again? Or you can actually put it because you being our moderator. I need you to put it on the live chat so that people can follow you. So when this decide okay. when you decide to go live with this, everybody's going to want to watch because this is a different topic that I don't know if anybody else out there is actually touching on. So there's not many. And I think I think the exciting thing about my podcast is that I'm very excited to educate people on what's going on, because I'm going to be able to answer all the crazy questions. And I'm not going to give too much detail, but, you know, questions, questions like, you know, what happens when you're being cremated and you have implants? 
you remove the implants so they stay in so we're going to go into very very deep detail on exactly what happens what we do and um, how we take care of your loved ones you know after they pass wow okay be sure to put your youtube on the on the um the the, the live chat and we'll put it on the description as well so thank Definitely, you and i appreciate it magic girl aka genesis you know what? Have a good night. Expect the unexpected. And thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Have a good night, Tony. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. So, uh, Alice, go ahead and put up the number now. So that way we can have uh, people call in and share their freaky stories. Anything you guys want to share tonight? Anything you guys want to uh, express as far as like a freaky tale? Maybe you want to call in and share what your favorite costume was. What your favorite Halloween uh, um, uh, you know, memory was, you know, because think about this coming from a family, a Mexican family of 10, my mom made all of our costumes and took us out trick or treating. And you know where she would take us, Alex? To the white areas because they give away the best candy. Palos <laughs> Verdes. Uh, Torrance, most likely Torrance, uh, uh, Redondo Beach, that area. We used to give the so we used to get the good candies. We take a big old pillowcase and probably hit about 200 homes and come home with a big old pillowcase. And even though our parents used to go through all the candies, they used to take the best ones. That's just, I guess maybe it's because they're the ones that burn that gas. So they, they, they get first dibs on your candy. Alex, a uh, question for you. Yes, sir. While we're waiting for our first call, um, what was your, if any, favorite or what was your first halloween costume that you could remember do you remember it's funny that you that you asked me that because i had the same uh costume that you had the devil devil, costume yeah except uh my aunt painted like my eyes black and from when my mom told me i got scared when i saw myself in the mirror (laughs) you probably look like a panda it's probably a red panda Yeah, yeah yeah it was almost like what you had on okay okay somebody at one point thought i was a chapolin and then an- another guy thought I was uh, uh, Elmo. <laughs> what? Well, well, not back then, but when I, whenever I posted it up. So I'm leaving the number up to you guys. If you guys want to call in and share a freaky story, you guys want to share a freaky tale. A lot of you guys yesterday said you guys were going to be calling in and share another story. Call in, share a, if you got a nice Halloween story. If you got want to share what you were growing up, what was your favorite costume? It is now time to do it. This is where you become a part of the show so uh alex and what about your brother what was he my brother i remember my mom dressed him up as a king as a king a little king yeah okay now let me ask you this did you get mad because you were the devil and he was the king no no because when i i had the devil me and my brother are like uh like almost seven eight years apart okay so like I remember my first costume was that that one about the the devil and but my brother's first costume was um was a little king costume. Okay, and when you used to uh, go trick or treating, did you uh, um stay just stay in the neighborhood or did you guys go elsewhere? Yeah, we never went anywhere else. We always stayed in Wilmington, honestly. Okay, okay. We we, we would just tackle some of the houses around our house yeah. and then head on out to Torrance or Redondo Beach. And get the, get all the good stuff. Well, my my mom used to work, so she didn't really have like she was already tired, so she'd walk us like for thirty minutes around the block, maybe. Half okay, an hour. okay. We got our first call. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Yes, sir. Tony. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh shit! This is Rich from uh, Imperial Valley, California. Rich, how are you tonight, man? Doing all right, man. It's my first time calling in, bro. All good. All good. Listen. Uh, I was asking people if you just want to share a story, um, if you. But I do have a question for you. Uh, I, okay. every, everybody that calls in, I have a question for. Kind of a freaky question, right. and give me your best answer, okay? Okay. Uh, here, well, is it personal? <laughs> no, no, no. Here it, here it is, right here. If you were given the death penalty, what would your last meal be? What will my last meal be? Yes. What would you want to mm. eat last? It, like before you get executed. <laughs> it, it, it's a <laughs> well, freaky, it's a freaky question. I would love a T-bone steak, but I would have to pick some tacos, man. <laughs> some tacos? 
Yeah. Okay, tacos de pastor, yeah. the carne asada. Okay, okay. I thought maybe some buche. Oh, good, man. So you answered the question. <laughs> if you want to uh, share a story, or maybe you got a Halloween story, or go for it. The floor is yours. Um, I have, all right, all right, thank you. Um, I have two uh, ghost stories. Okay. And um, I'll, I'll um, try to make them quick, you know. I don't want to, you know, take up time, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this was back in like 1984, right? And I was about uh, nine years old. We are at uh, my grandma's house on the east side of town, and um, you know, they had a party, right? Um, uh, she owns like about uh, an acre out there, and um, you know, we're all kids, you know, you know, playing war and all that kind of shit, right? With our guns and everything, and we had more in the back shed. So we go out there like at, probably like at midnight, I recall. It was me, my primo, um, Tony, and Roy, and I think it's a, somebody else was with us, you know? Just a yes. bunch of kids anyway. So um, we open up this 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 shed, which has been there for, for decades. And um, there was this little lady, bro, like she was dressed in white, right? She was sitting down with her legs crossed. And she had like, um, remember uh, back in the day um, at the funerals, uh, the old ladies would actually, um, you know, wear, wear that mesh over her face. Yes, you know, yes, the mesh. yes. So, um, yeah, so she was sitting there looking very sad and I said hey who are you and she just looked sad right and then I grabbed the rock right and I threw it and it went right through her dude oh wow I mean she was just glowing and then as we looked up there was this guy bro with the suit I mean he was like a shadow like ghost and he was smoking a cigarette with a top hat bro and we saw him and I did the same thing bro with with a rock, right? I just threw it and it went right through him, dude. And then we just freaked out and just ran, you know, back, you know, to my um <laughs> my nana's house. And then we told him my um uh, Theo Ray, and, and then he went out there and he goes, "There's nothing out there." And then he's like, "Get fucking around." I said, "No, man, serious, man. <laughs> we just saw two ghosts out there, man." Wow. Isn't that weird. Yes, it is weird. It's freaky. Yeah, man. You had did you have another one? You said you had two. Hello? We got a freaky silence. Hello? Caller. Okay. Um, caller, if you, you can hear me, call me back. That was pretty weird. I hope I didn't lose him. I, am I disconnected from there? The Bluetooth? No, we're good, huh? All right, caller, if you could hear me, call me back because you, you got cut off after your first story. I, I know you had two of them. So, anyways, the lines are open. Anybody wants to call in? Here we go. Caller. It's me again. Um, I don't know what, what happened, man. It, it just threw, threw me off. It's okay. It's getting freaky. It's getting closer to Halloween. So you had a second story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, this was back in uh, 1996. I was about 22 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to work at um, Pizza Hut back, you know, then. Okay. And um, me, and, me, and, me and a friend of mine, um, we uh, got off work at like about 1030. You know, we, we both went home, you know, showered and shit. You know, then we, we went, went to Mick. You know that you know hit up the bars and all the clubs out there, and we um you know crossed the border probably about like about two in the morning because you know we had to work the next day, and um where I live at you know it's a very 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 small town yes and like when it's about that that you know um you know time bro it's like there is no cars in sight there is there is nobody on the street dude so um we're um you know cruising around and shit and um we see this lady dude like in the alley coming out in the fucking dark and you know um the whole uh sidewalk was all lit up with the poles and shit yeah and dude this person was dressed like a fucking nun dude mm. with their fucking hands out and then just the eyes they were black and then you can, you can just see these weird ass teeth right so we just cruised by really fucking slow and then we both said what the fuck was that and then dude we turn around right maybe with like tenth of a second and then that person was gone dude but my own friend right um in his car, he, um, you know, backed up. And, dude, you can see everyone's backyard with the fence, right? And yeah. then, dude, there is no way that person could have disappeared that fast, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was weird. Wow. So Black you, eyes, dude. So you had two crazy experiences. Yeah, man. Wow. Yep. Well, caller, man, I greatly appreciate well, you. That's taking, all I want to share. It's all good, my brother. And thank you for calling in. Thank you for being a part of the show. Hope you have a dope Halloween, man. Okay, Tony. Thank you. Take care. Okay, let's go. Let's uh, let's keep it pushing, you guys. 
anybody wants to call in and just uh, kind of give, if you have a Halloween story, if you have a freaky tale, you want to call in and just ask anything, here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Uh, if you could please uh, turn on your television, guys. He hung up. Here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Kevin from downtown L.A. Kevin, how are you tonight? Thank you for calling in and being a part of the show. Are you ready to answer your, your freaky question? You, man? I'm good. Uh, yeah, actually, me and my friends have been watching Freaky Tales for quite a while and i want to ask you do you still have contact with like some of the old guests like mad dog or a uh, lady um scaredy cat yes i do i actually i see I, those, yeah yes w would you like to see them back is that what that is yeah that would be pretty dope a lot of people yeah, have been requesting lady the whole, um, oh sorry no, oh go ahead yeah I know um, Spice Smuggler scared her away. I think <laughs> the second time she was there. Yes, yeah, so you, you you've been watching. <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, we've been watching. Trust me. And uh, yeah, I, just, I was just curious what happened to them. Oh, no, well, I I just haven't been in contact with them, but I still have contact with them, so I can actually reach out to lady. And I think I believe there's another lady named Nicole as well. Uh, there was a, a scaredy cat. Yeah. You know, yes. But I, I want to ask you a question before we mm -hmm. get to you, okay? So here's my question right, to cool. you. I have a freaky question for all of my callers. Yeah. What Let's do you do What do you want etched on your tombstone? What is one thing you want written on your tombstone? Hmm. The only thing Norby's wanted besides Taco Bell. <laughs> hey, if that's what you want. That's exact. That's what it is. Then. <laughs> All good. All right. All I'll good. let you go now. Have fun. Okay. Thank you. Spencer Baca. Yes. You know what? I'm glad this guy has been watching, bro, since day one. Honestly, man, thank you and your friends or your family. I'm not sure exactly who you said, but thank you for being a fan and thank you for being a part of Freaky Tales. So once again, uh, the lines are open, and if anybody wants to call in and share a story, um, here we go. Call your name, and where are you calling from? Hello, Tony. This is a bad pit bull calling from the uh, pet cemetery. Thank you for calling in, Brad, yeah. from the pet cemetery. I have a question for you, a freaky question. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever said Bloody Mary in front of the mirror? I thought about it in elementary school, and I'm like, nah, uh, I, um, I'd rather go watch the Candyman movie. But no, I, I did it because I was too scared, and, uh, and I don't like mirrors, actually. <laughs> okay, okay. All good. Thank you for calling in, my bro. What did you want to share? You know, let me ask you, do you remember your first Halloween costume? Um, it was something uh cheap you know you know when you had the the plastic mask yes came with like a little plastic suit that you got from any liquor store or any cadenceria <laughs> or, or, yeah you know. i think it was thrifties back in the day i don't know if you're my age it would have been thrifties uh, it, it, i think i think it was a hulk incredible hulk so like a green vinyl like trash bag yeah and yeah the body printed on there yeah, yeah and then you walked around making the noise like the incredible hulk we all did that yeah, and, and we smell like Chinese plastic, so, <laughs> you know, so. Oh, good. But uh, I, I wanted to uh, share with you a, uh, oh, Tony, uh, one question. Yes. Um, on your dreams um, for the prophetic one, but just one question. Um, did those visions that you have, were, were they in your lifetime? Yes. That you saw them, those visions? Okay. Yes. Cool. And then, uh. The, the story that I want to share is uh, the time that I used to work in Australia, uh, going to different uh, shops, and I was driving with a friend. It was um, my wife, fr my friend's wife, and my friend in the front seat, and I was in the back seat. We were driving from Sydney, Australia, to Canberra, that's mm. the capital of Australia, and that's about 
a 12, almost 12 hour drive. Wow. We broke it down into, uh, into, uh, into one day. And, um, long story short, um, I'd rather take 10, 10 mosquito bites here in America than one Australian one. Oh, you know what? So, I've heard of those. Australian, yeah, they're, they're just very, very bad. And, uh, as we're going down the road, um, we'll probably going through the the bull the blue mountains with which has a lot of yaoi and uh, bigfoot sightings and mean mean lights but i um as we're driving i tell uh i tell them both them i'm in the back seat i tell them damn that that's a crazy hardcore motherfucker to be standing there all alone under that under that uh highway light yeah and they both turn around like they're and they tell me what are you talking about i'm like that that dude, that white dude that was right there under the light. And all of a sudden, uh, my friend's wife got goosebumps because she, she knows that I don't kid around, especially out there. And uh, like, like, are you being serious? Cause, but it basically, it was just a dude, probably five foot nine, white guy, uh, six o'clock shadow. He had like a big, big gear belly. He was yeah. short. A slight, slight hunchback. Um, probably looked like a, like a gamer and looking straight forward the whole time, never blinked and, um, and, and short. And again, knowing that area, I know that these mosquitoes will eat you up. But that, that guy just stood still. He never turned his head. Oh. And another thing in that area, we've seen, um, go- goannas. Well, like those big, big, big lizards there. So those things will, will, will bite you. Oh, and, shoot. And uh, so we know, me, myself, and you know, I never went out there. If I slept anywhere in the outback, I would try to sleep uh, in, inside a car or in a zipped up tent. But just never, never out in the open because it's, it's too much wildlife. But whatever, whatever that thing was that looked like a human. Yeah. You know, only, only I saw it, but, but. Oh my goodness! We have two guys that hanged up. Okay. Sorry, my bro. Sorry. If you can call back right now, go for it. The lines are open. Uh, but I don't know why that happened. Here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Calling from uh, San Jose, California. How you doing, sir? My name's Edwin. Edwin, how are you? Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. I have a question for you. Is that okay if I ask you? Yes, sir. It's a freaky question. I'm calling everybody that calls in. I have a, like a freaky question. It's a Halloween special type of deal. Okay. Would, here it goes. Would you spend a full night inside of a haunted house if someone paid you? How much? Say a thousand dollars. Fuck no. <laughs> Okay, so you're a man with the price. What would you charge? Shit, uh, you said one night, right? Yes, you just said one night. One night, fuck. Unos quinientos, maybe three more, aunque sea. Okay, there it is there. Shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, because if I'm going to get fucking, really fucking scared and I can't get out these motherfuckers. Then, right, exactly. You know, the, for those 24 hours, it's... Hell yeah. Okay. Okay. So you would consider it? Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, um, so what is your question or you, what is your story you wanted to share tonight? Uh, so one of my questions is, have you been to the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California? No, I have not. I plan on going there, and I want to tell you something. My sister went as a somewhat skeptic. And when she came back, she came back frightened and told me that something did touch her there, that she literally felt a hand grab her leg. Oh, shit. Yes. Have you been there? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I've been there once, but uh, maybe I wasn't, like, knowledgeable about all these things. I was was a lot younger. So... You know what I'm saying? Uh, now that I look at these things, it's just like, fuck. Like, a lo mejor si has sentido unas cosas aquí y no has sabido de qué eran. 
And uh, so my story that I wanted to tell was in West Side San Jose, like uh, I live with my dad and my dad, you know, was, you know, poverty. And so we lived in like in the back of a garage. Yes. And uh, so we had a little ass room and uh, we, me and my dad got hella drunk and I couldn't sleep because he was snoring so hard. And uh, I hit him in the ribs with my elbow and some fucking toy just went off. Even though my dad didn't uh, wake up, the toy went off like on the, on the top of the garage where they had storage. Mm. And it made this little noise and I was like so fucking scared that I fucking tapped my dad like, so I think I broke his ribs. Wow. He said, but the toy was still playing and my dad even tripped out like, what the fuck? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Now, have you ever What's experienced that? anything else like that? Um, uh, at the same spot, yes. Oh, like, okay. uh, it, but it wasn't a toy. It wasn't a toy. It was, uh, you know, like, uh, and, uh, like, you know, 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 but they go back there in the back, uh, in the back of where I used to stay. They'll go in the back and just take a leak. Yeah. But I was like, oh, somebody, somebody's coming back to take a leak. And you just hear the, the, the rocks crackling. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and and uh, I had the door open. Like I was like waiting for my dad. And I, I didn't see nobody. So I fucking curb myself, and and I was like, "Fuck it, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I don't know nothing. Like, what the fuck?" Yes, yes, yes. Wow, man. Well, you know what, my brother? Yes, sir, Thank yes. you for calling in and sharing that story. Yes. Sir. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, I'm a good listener, and I once again thank you for being a part of the show. Hey. Have a good, have a good night. Thank you, callers. So far, all of them have been great. I appreciate it. I apologize for those calls that have been hanging up. I don't know if it's your cheek touching it. I'm not sure, but I apologize for that. And please, when you call, have your TV turned down, please. Call it your name, and where are you calling from? What up, Tony? This is Jose from Yuma. Jose from Yuma. How you doing tonight? Good, good, man. I called yesterday. Oh, okay. You know what? Are you ready for your question? Yeah, yeah. Shoot it. Here it is here. Freaky question for you. Have you ever used an Ouija board? And if you did, what happened? Okay, well, check this out, man. Not necessarily a Ouija board, right? Okay. But I did go to like this. I don't like this brujo type medium type person, right? And, you know, this person feels like the, like the mean bit of but, you know, all the other, the guy, right? Yes. All the works with the mean bit, right? So he throws the cards, and in one of the cards, he's like, there's a relative that wants to tell you something that passed away a long time ago. Do you want a message? And I was like, yeah, sure, you know. So this dude takes out a white candle, right? Mm -hmm. He takes out a paper. It's blank. Blank. It's blank. He starts, like, passing it over the flame, right? Like if he's writing on it, right? With the flame. And he writes, like, a whole letter, dude. A whole letter on there. And you know what? It was from one of my relatives that did pass away, you know, a long time ago. They used to love me so much, you know. Oh, wow. It was uh, my great granny. Because he said by name and everything, he described it and everything too, and I was like, oh. Wow. That must definitely freak freaked you out. out uh, yeah, was, I was going to say, I freaked you out. Man, it was creepy, man. It was creepy. Like, it was a person. Wow. Wow. And with the burn, with the with the burn marks on the letter, I mean on the on the white paper, it was like, like a white sheet from printing paper. Wrote full sentences, a full letter, dude, a full letter. It was weird, man. It was creepy. Wow, that is creepy. What should I say? Freaky. And um, well, I mean, it's kind of like not really like the Ouija board, but I mean, it was a form of communication with us. 
with, uh, you know, the afterlife, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Did you have anything else you wanted to share with us other than you answering yeah, my question? Yeah. You know that you know that one Mexican story that everybody everybody says is really popular. This is one Mexican story that they used to share to me for uh, Halloween. Okay, the sure. The one with the with the, with the chick dancing with the with the devil. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's that, a nightclub. Yes. Okay, so right here next to Yuma, we're in Sonora, San Luis Sonora, here in Colorado. There used to be a club back in the day, like the 60s. We're talking about the 60s right here. Yeah, 60s, 70s. And it was called uh, Cine y Disco Le Fet. And they said that this chick, and it's the same story, that this chick, she was real beautiful. She was wearing a, a long dress, you know, that short from the front, long from the, from the back. Yes. That dress. And that... She had gone, well, they, I don't know, switch up a little bit, but that she had gone through a break, couple stuff like that, and she was going to go out to the bar and dance, and dance with anyone. Pretty much dance with anyone. And this man in a suit pulls up to her and takes her up to dance, right? In the middle of the dance floor, I guess, she starts to elevate. I think it's the end of the story, and she starts to elevate. And all of a sudden, once she's like up in the air, boom. Let's her down. I mean, let's drop. She falls in to the ground. She dies. Breaks her neck. Wow. And there's this old, oh, this, this place I'm talking about, this disco. I call it out there in Mexico, La Disco. It looked like a castle. And on top of the castle, there was this snake that went all around the disco, all around the disco. And when... They turned the place down. The snake stayed there. And I guess now the owner bought it. The owner bought it the whole land. But yeah. the owner kept that snake and put it on the, on the, Navarda, you know, of his house. It's creepy. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, man, if you ever get a chance, look it up on Google. Le Fet. Cine Le Fet y Disco. You know, it's the same story that everybody says, but the chick elevating, you know, yeah. dancing with the dad and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. You know what? As soon as yeah, man. I don't know if you follow me on Freaky Tales or on my regular page, because I would like for you oh, to... Oh, every, every time, bro. Okay, please, All the time. Please DM me that name, please. So I can definitely look I into actually, it. Um, I actually DM'd you already, man. Um, I sent you some pictures a while back, because we talked about when you had Lady Two Bear and all those um, about the... The, the red rich witchcraft about the love stuff and all that stuff, you know? Okay. But, but, I sent you some pictures, man, about, about, yeah, about stuff, you know, that, you know, people that are seeing, you know, things that have that been done, you know? Okay. But DM me this name, please, so I can look it up because I, w- I want to research it. On the Instagram? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay. Cool, man. I got you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for, uh, for the show, and hey man, it's a full moon right before Halloween. Yeah, it's a full moon right before Halloween, so yes, I'm expecting some freaky calls. And it's, and it's a weekend, man, and you know what's crazy? The crazies are out on the weekend, and it's a full moon, bro. So <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff's gonna go down, bro. Absolutely. A lot of crazy's gonna go down this weekend, for sure. Hell yeah. Okay, man. <laughs> All right, man. For you take sure. care Thank now. Bye bye. Later. It's a full moon out tonight, guys. Here we go. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? Yeah, give me one second. Yeah, hello? Yes, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? Hey, yo, what's up, Tony? How's it going, man? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Oh, all right, cool, cool. Now, you ain't seeing anybody here, bro. Just chilling, man. Uh, we call man just watching the show. Um, but, I yeah, ha- man, I want to tell you something, bro. Uh, I called, I want to say I called probably like about two months ago. Uh-huh. And I told you, uh, and uh, we talked about this story, bro, that I seen, uh, this giant thing with the with the red eyes and the big wings. Yes, yeah, I remember. I don't know that. if you remember. No, I do. But before we get into right, that, you... I have to ask you the freaky question first. All right, cool, man. Okay, I don't know why my guy keeps coughing over here. It's not a ghost, guys. It's just my boy. He's drinking uh, twisted tea. I think that's what he's drinking. Twisted tea. Okay, so here we go. Right here. 
Um, have you ever had, well, this is, this is self-explanatory, but let me go ahead and give you a different one. Which horror movie scared right. you for life? If any. Man. Uh, well, uh, I gotta say, bro, it was the exorcist. Exorcist. First one. Yes, absolutely. The original one. Yes. Yes. Man, that shit right there, bro. It, it uh, it seemed real, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, if I had to say something, bro, I would say the movies nowadays, man, they kind of, they seem too, uh, too fake in a way. Big you know time. what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I and, agree. uh, well, yeah, man, uh, I was trying, uh, I was trying to call, bro, last night when you had that other show. Yes. But shit, man, I couldn't get through, though, man. But, uh, I remember, bro, that the topic was about dreams, right? Yes. All right, well, yeah, man, uh, I just think it was weird, bro, how, like, how, like, in my dream, I saw that exact same shit that I saw uh, when I was with my cousin. The exact same thing, bro. I seen the same shit in my dream. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want to hear, like, like your input, you know what I mean? What you think, you know? No, okay. Here, my, my first question would be, did you see it in your dream first or did you see it in person first? Nah, man, I see Nah, man, I saw it in person first. Okay. Because if you would have had a dream yeah, of it you know? first... And then saw it. Then I could have said that you saw something prophetic, something that was going to happen later on. You know, that's what prophetic pretty much means, you know. But seeing it first, now I kind of think that it creep into your dreams because it's already recorded in your brain and you might have just, well, repeated and saw it again. Yeah, probably. You know, but. Yeah, man. And then the the other thing, too, bro, that I want to mention is, I want to say about a good solid month, and you had another caller. I believe he was like from like Southern California. Yes. He said uh, he was elaborating on the story that I told you, you know, and uh, I just think, bro, like that shit right there is dope. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not the only one that sees that sees these, these type of things and stuff, you know? Yes. Because uh, for a while, bro, I was just waiting and stuff. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what it is tonight. Full moon? Alex, what do you think? I can't call it. Okay, caller, please call back if you can hear me. Okay, hold on. Hope that might be him. If not, nope. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Man, it's just that Grim. Hey, uh, I gotta say one thing first and foremost. Yes, sir. Shout out Freaky Tales. Shout out Roll the Radium. Look, a lot of callers know what they're talking about. Yes. But there's a bunch of, like, like, fuck callers, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I got stories about dreams. I got stories about this and that and third. But Tony Radium, Tony. Yes, sir. You make a great YouTube. No matter what platform you're on, keep doing what you do. I support you, and I pray not only for you, but for you and your team. Because this is, like... You label it freaky tales, but it's not freaky. It's like tales of someone higher of power reaching out to you. Yes. You hear me? Yes. That's all I got to say. Thank you, my bro. Appreciate those prayers. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Caller, the one before, if you can hear me, please call back. We have time. I really don't like it when it cuts off like that. Again, I don't know if it's you guys or um, I don't know. But the lines are open. Uh, I want you guys to keep calling in. We're having a great time. Callers are great. And the stories are great. And uh, we just needed a, I don't know why that happened, though. But once again, my apologies. Caller, your name or where are you calling from? What's up, Tony? How you doing? Hey, uh, pretty good. How are you? Doing pretty good, pretty good. Uh, your name, and where are you calling from, if you don't mind me asking? My, my name is Omar, calling from Hollywood. Omar I'm from Hollywood. the guy that just called you and asked you about your brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And um, I had a story about the Ouija board. Um, we were, like, in her, our early teens, and we were playing it with our friends, and it was a... Supposedly, it was a little boy that was telling us where he got killed. Oh, wow. And um, he he said he got killed right here in 18th neighborhood, which is close to my house. 
and he was telling us all the details. And this is like 1998, so before like you know Google and stuff, so we couldn't Google it. Yes. But I mean, it was telling us a story about it. So I feel like the the Ouija board is real. Yeah, I I, I do believe that it, it is real. I do believe that. But um, yes. I, I have to ask you a question because I'm asking all of my callers. Uh, all right, go ahead. So here it is right here. Have you ever seen a fresh corpse? Yes. I've been around people getting shot and killed. Wow. Um, I had to pick up some sunglasses from an unnamed neighborhood that I don't want to say. Yes. Uh, I had to pick up my girl's sunglasses that fell like next to the guy's body and he was like asking me for help and there was a priest present and he was like telling him his like the last will and stuff yeah yeah wow wow man that must be sad. i mean it wasn't a corpse but it was he was shot already and like the the priest was telling him like you know okay to walk with god and like praying for him over him yeah and he got killed like pretty close to my house so i didn't stay to talk to the police or nothing because i, I ain't no rat you know yeah of course you were asleep just like yeah. we all were, brother. Yeah, but I've seen that. Wow. Hey, I have one quick question for you, Tony. Yes, sir. All right. If if Marvelous, uh, Norby's, Magic Girl, and Alex were all your kids, what would you dress them up as Halloween for? Like, for Halloween, what would you dress them up as? Okay, Alex, I don't know why. This just came to me. Forgive me, Alex. A frog. I never seen a frog <laughs> costume. I thought you said DJ Khaled before. Calmate. Okay. Marvelous. I don't know why. A pirate. I think he would make a great pirate. Norby's, he would be Ñoño from Chavo del Ocho. Okay. Spot on. Magic girl, I would dress her up like a devil. That's it. A devil? <laughs> I'll put Marvelous as a devil for the metal. Okay, okay. You know, so yeah, yeah. Th- those are my... That's they, all I know. Those are, those are my, yeah, that's a great question, though. All right, Tony. Appreciate you, man. Oh, uh, no problem, man. Thank you. Dude. Thank you. Right. Okay, let's keep it pushing, you guys. Let's see. Who's going to call me? That was a great question. If you guys were my kids, a frog. So. Ribbit. <laughs> 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 See what you made me do. Okay, here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Hey, what up, Tony? It's me again, bro. How you doing? I believe the car dropped. Yes. Hey, man, pretty good. Pretty good, man. Yeah, man. So, yeah, bro, I just called right now about the other topic, you know what I mean, that we discussed about the dreams and stuff. Yes. You know, it's just that, uh, it's just that the car dropped, bro, you know what I mean? So I couldn't finish up what I was saying and stuff, you know? But I just want to say, bro, thank you for the show, man. It's a good show, bro, and uh, shit, man, I appreciate it, bro. I fucking enjoy this shit every time I watch it, man. Right on. Thank you, my brother. I greatly appreciate that, man. It means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Thanks, man. Have a good one. You too. I appreciate those calls, man. And, like, it truly does mean something when somebody does appreciate you, and then you don't even know them, you know? That's a blessing. That's, that's a blessing. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? It's Anthony from uh, the East Coast, Virginia. Anthony from the East Coast, Virginia. Is this your first time calling? My first time calling. Okay, then I have a freaky question for you, okay? All right, let's hear it. Here it is. Have you ever had an unexplainable experience with the supernatural? Yeah, I'd say a few times. Okay. You care to uh, elaborate? I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, we'll just get into the story, then I can give you one. Yes, sir. Um, all right, so we'll go back. This is probably, like, late 90s. Uh, we had a uh, – my family had a Rottweiler, and he ended up biting somebody. So we had to put him down. All right? And so we ended up getting another Rottweiler. And uh, <clears throat> one night when he was a puppy, me and my dad, we fell asleep in the living room. And I wake up, and I see the dog, and I think it's the new dog, and mm-hmm. it's out of the cage. Yes. So I wake my dad up. I'm like, hey, dog is out of the cage. He's just chilling here in the living room. He's a puppy at that point. 
So he wakes up slowly, and the dog just literally fades away into the darkness. Hmm. So, you know, he, he's like, oh, you were dreaming. You know, that's not like anything of it. It's nothing, you know? Yes. And so, then on a separate occasion, I woke up in the middle of the night. Um, our original Rottweiler, he used to love to run down the hallway. Like, he'd get the zoomies, and he would run down the hallway. That was, like, his thing to do. Yes. And uh, so I wake up. I hear the, the new dog in the cage. He's just going crazy, barking, growling, going crazy. And the other dog is literally just running up and down the hallway, just going nuts. The ghost dog, essentially. Um, and I think he just really wasn't ready to go, you know? Yeah. And I just couldn't understand it at first because everybody's like, oh, you were dreaming. But I was like, no, I really, I really saw that dog. Wow. Wow. Did you ever have any other experience, like, similar? Or was this, like, a one-time thing? Um, you know, that happened twice with that dog in particular. Um, but, you know, I've had other, you know, interesting experiences. Um, we lived in a house one time that was uh, definitely haunted. And uh, some kind of bad spirits in that house. And I have a picture of my girlfriend and I in this house. Yes. And, uh and there's literally like a like a horrible like skull looking like ghost face just sitting there in the picture next to us. It's the freakiest thing. Wow. Wow. And, uh, you know, when we lived in the house, there was just all kinds of unexplainable things that that would happen. You know. Yes. Something that was specific to that house. Yes. You know, I I had a question because you say you're from Virginia, okay? And um, how, how did you come across hearing about us over here, you know, in California as far as uh, Freaky Tales? All right, well, let me, let me give you the rundown here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to my dad. He introduced me to Cypress Hill way back in the day. And, uh, and ever since then, I've always been a fan of Cypress Hill and Be Real and, and just watching their podcast and all that stuff. And then came across yours and I really love the, uh, the freaky tales man and I can really relate to a lot of this stuff I've had a lot of weird shit happen in my life oh wow wow thank you man Gr- greatly appreciate it I love being over there Dr. Green Thumbs uh, I've been over there three times Be Real has been over here four times and I know he's invited me to go back um, and I would love to go back man but I greatly appreciate you tuning in man I, I truly appreciate it definitely man I'll definitely call back in the future as well Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Have a good one. Thank you, man. It's good talking to you. Likewise. Okay, let's go. Let's keep it pushing. Uh, wow, all the way from Virginia, Alex. And they heard about me from Dr. Green Thumb. Thank you, Be Real and the Be Real team. Dr. Green Thumb, much love, much respect to you guys. Here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Caesar calling from uh, Vallejo, California. Caesar, how are you tonight? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Pretty hey, uh, good. Tony, first time caller, long time listener. Um, I'd like to share a quick little dream I had. Uh, uh, great, but can I ask you my freaky question first? Yes, sir. Okay. Here's here it is. Would you sleep inside of a coffin for a night? Is it for money? Say that somebody was willing to pay you a thousand dollars. You know what, man? You know, if I just had like big house with a lot of rooms and a lot of play money, I'd probably do some crazy shit like that. To be <laughs> honest, like just have a have a little spooky room. Yes. Where uh, I had a little coffin I'd sleep in. Okay. Hey, you answered it. Thank you for that. Go ahead and share us your uh, your dream. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about this. Man, I've been being a call in for a long time and share this. Um, up. Oh, give me one second. Yes. Yeah. Ten four. Um, so this dream, you guys were having an episode the other day about, uh, dreams and nightmares and all that. And, uh, really what I was trying to share was, uh, how dreams and like kind of putting yourself in a state of uh, watching a lot of scary movies and consuming a lot of horror movies, mm-hmm. man, you start bringing this negative energy, right? <clears throat> and my story is like, is like this. So my wife was pregnant. Uh, it was our first baby. Um, uh, you know, we really can't go out nowhere. Um, you know, she's like eight months, nine months, so we're not going out nowhere. Um, all day, I'm pretty much just getting ready for the baby and being at home, taking care of my wife. Um, but she's still going to school. And so when she was in school, I basically uh, watched a lot of horror movies. 
fast forward about two months. My daughter's born. She's about uh, two months now. My wife's still going to school. And uh, basically, she went to night school. Um, weird stuff started happening. So, like, my daughter would basically, um, she started, like, always looking at the corner. Uh, I started feeling, like, this bad energy. My wife uh, started telling me, like, look, you're looking at too many horror movies. I think you're attracting negative energies. I felt like it was kind of dark. I thought it was the stress of being a new father. Long story short, it all came down to this. I'm sleeping one day, watching a movie, and I woke up, and uh, I forgot what movie it was on, but it was like maybe The Exorcist. We'll just say The Exorcist. And uh, all of a sudden, um, my daughter, I'm laying down on the couch. My daughter, she's in my arm, right? She's in my arm, and I hear all of a sudden like the door moving. And I know it's not my wife, because I knew what time she got out of school and got home. And all of a sudden, I, I, you know, I'm protective, new father, right? I run over to the door. Um, peeping in, and I see, you know, three three individuals trying to break in. Mm. So all of a sudden, they kind of pick my door open. Uh, it's a tug of war, right? So we're basically, they're trying to get in. I'm trying to close the door, and it's three of them, and so I'm getting tired, and all I'm thinking of is I got to protect my daughter. Yes. So next thing you know, I, they outnumber me, right? And uh, I'm like, fuck it, I got to let the door open. So I let the door open, I tuck my hand back, and I'm about to swing at the first person I see. And mind you, I lived in a kind of, um, at that time, kind of, I lived in the hood. Yeah. So I let the door open, tuck my arm back, and I swing. And it's like this, it, I think it was like a white, older white dude that, that I seen. So I swing, just as I'm about to hit him in the face, I hear, ah! And I shook out of it, and dude, I was like one inch from popping my wife in the face. Oh, wow. And I guess, yeah, I guess it came into a, the point where it was like a dream. I don't know if I was sleepwalking. I don't know if I was consuming so many horror movies that my dreams in real life kind of triggered that. When she was opening the door, I thought it was real life. And I, somebody's trying to break into my house. But anyway, um, what I was trying to let your you know, callers know is uh, you could attract a lot of bad energy, man. Um, a lot of these horror movies we consume, even like this podcast, as much as I enjoy it, I like it because I'm I'm a curious person, you know. Part of what validates heaven, God, and all that is also considering there's demons and you know there's the devil out there. And yeah. so I think also the adrenaline rush of just the horror, you know, it, I, I like it. I like the adrenaline rush. I like the the horror aspect of it. But we just got to be careful that we consume in a healthy a healthy amount because it could consume us. And it's fun, you know, talking about these subjects, but. Especially on Halloween, just be careful what everybody's consuming because it's like a diet. You know, we eat bad food, we gain weight, we get unhealthy. Same thing, right? The negative things we put in our mind, we can manifest. Real life. You know what? And I agree with you 100% on that. I, I do. I, th- I do think that there too much of one thing or too, it could consume you. So I, I agree with that. So... No, nah, right on. And Tony, I just want to say, man, uh, thank you for uh, your show, man. You've been picking up the pace. I know it's uh, Halloween, so you're putting in work. But uh, hopefully even after the uh, Halloween, man, you're, you continue to put it out for you tell because uh, it's, it's fun and it's a fun little platform to consume this type of content. Thank you. Thank you, man. Listen, uh, you have a good one, and I appreciate that. Thank you for calling in. Yep, no problem, man. Okay. Yep, thank you. Bye. Okay, guys, let's keep it pushing. We have a couple of more minutes. We're going to take a couple of more phone calls. You enjoying yourself, Alex? Say yes on the mic. Yep. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Hello. Hello, caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hey, Tony, finally. <laughs> finally getting there. My name's Tony. Hey, you Tokayo. I'm calling from Arizona, but I'm originally from El Monte. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, before you share your story or ask your question, I need to ask you a freaky question. Okay. Here we go. Okay. In the zombie apocalypse, what would be your weapon of choice? Uh, either be a machete or or uh, uh, or M4. Okay. Or five, five, six. There you go. There you go. So go ahead. Uh, was there a story or uh, anything you wanted to ask? I got a, <laughs> I got a, I got a freaky tale for you. I yes, got a sir. lot of them. I've been trying to call for a lot, um, but 
uh, I was in the Navy for a long time, and uh, and I was stationed in Pearl Harbor, and uh, and I got stationed in Pearl Harbor by the uh, uh, by the pineapple fields uh, by the Dole plantation. Yes. And uh, and when I first got there, they assigned me to a barracks. And when I was when I, when I was there the first night, I had a I had a roommate, and. You know, in the nighttime, I figured that he'll go, he'll go to work because uh, the shower will turn on and stuff like that. So I kept on going. So we had different schedules. So one time I wake up and I and I didn't realize that he had he had transferred. To, he had transferred to Pearl Harbor, and it was going like that for like two for like two weeks that the showers turning on and stuff. So then, so then I started getting up and and turning them off. So this one time, uh, I I I came I came from from work from watch, and and I was tired, and in the parish they have um they have room inspections. So so I I, I laid down I laid down, and and I kind of like opened my eyes and there was a there was a sailor an old sailor there, and I thought it was somebody like like you know one of the commanders to come to do the inspection, and I'm like hey you know it's like it's like 6 p.m. like. Like, you know, leave me alone, you know? And the guy just starts chuckling. Hmm. And I'm like, what? And I finally get up. And when I got up, I blinked and he was gone. And I'm like, what? So, I, you know, they tell me, like, you know, sometimes to curse it out of your house and stuff where I was raised. Right. Well, I cursed it out. I cursed it out. And then I laid back down. And I'm not lying to you. As soon as I laid down, I, I know I was awake. I felt somebody grabbed both of my ankles and dragged me across the bed. Oh, and wow. I was like, Oh, I got up right away. I got up right away. And I, and I, and I ran downstairs and we had like a common area and I ran downstairs and I slept there for two weeks until, until the commanding officer that came to like, it was wrong. And I kind of explained to him and he gave me another room. Well, when they were help, when they were helping me out, we, uh, um, uh, we went to go get my stuff, and as soon as we opened the door, all the the the, the showers turned on. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah, and and uh, and it and it turns out like after that, um, it was like months later, so, some some new some new sailor came and he jumped out the window. He, he saw the same thing, but he jumped out the window. Oh wow! So he must have gotten terrified. Of yeah, that. yeah. Well. well yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I got used to it because I, I, growing up, growing up, I've always dealt with like ghosts and stuff like that. Like was like I, I think I think they chased my I think they they follow my mom because I have a brother that that passed away when he was a, a kid. Yes. So I, we always I have always seen a little boy. My mom hardly talks about him. He's way older than me, so mm. he was already passed away when before I was born. Mm. But he always goes there, and I've always seen him, and I just put two and two together because I, I every time I go see my mom. I always see that little boy, but I wasn't, I, I'm not scared of ghosts until they touch me. Yes. So like that time I wasn't scared because I seen a ghost. I was scared because they yanked my legs. Now, now when they yank your legs, did, I, I like details. So I ask detailed questions. If you can recall, did it feel like hands? Uh, yeah. It, it, it felt, it felt like, um, have you ever like, like had like, like, you know, like, like, uh, have somebody like like play around with your kids and they and they, and they grab your leg and they're like dragging you like that? Yeah, yeah. But it it felt it felt um how could I say it felt uh like a lot of pressure and really really cold. Oh wow! Really really cold and and I, and I had and I had marks on my I had marks on my ankles. I mean, this is like you know, and like I'm pretty sure like if it was social media stuff like that like before because this was in in 2002. Oh wow! Okay, wow. Yeah, this was in two thousand two, and it was like you know after like uh nine eleven and all that had had just all happened. But I just happened to get stationed in Hawaii, and right there at a it was a telecommunication station in um in the middle of the pineapple fields. But you know you used to hear a lot of stories because um a, a little bit of a history back there in the Dole Plantation, like the they, they had slaves right there in the pineapple fields. And they used to actually hang them right there oh. by where by where my, my by where the base, you know. Okay. Okay. And it was all that Fort Harbor stuff. Wow. Okay. 
But yeah, that's that's my, that's my story. I actually got I, I I seen I seen a I seen somebody like an old school sailor, and I thought I, I was like half awake. But when I got up, he disappeared. And then as soon as I laid down, I felt somebody just grab my legs and yank me. I was like, and that's what scared me because it, I I actually was awake and it and it dragged me like halfway on the bed. Wow, wow. Well. I've never yeah. experienced anything like, anything like that, my my bro. But I'm thankful that you called in and shared with us, because obviously these things do exist. So, I appreciate. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I seen, I seen that, and uh, I'll call I'll call I'll call later one time that uh, it happened to me again, but this time, it, you know, I tell my mom, and my mom tells me she's old school. She's like, you know what, Creo que era el diablo. you're not you're not in your right steps because I got up pretty traumatized from the from the military, so. She told me that 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 it was the devil that came, you know, to get me. That time, that time, everybody was there, and they and, and they literally saw somebody grab me. Wow, wow. Well, you know what? I encourage yeah, you to so call again. It, and, it wasn't the first time it happened to me. Yeah. Well, you know what? I encourage you to call again next time we go live and share the next share that other story. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will. Thank you, sir. Been talking to you, man. It's a, I've been trying a lot. I've been trying a lot, a lot, and finally I got through it. And I, I'm a long time listener. Thank you very much, and it's greatly appreciated. Have a good one, and enjoy your weekend. Oh, yeah, and thank you, too. Thank you for your great content to you and your whole team. Thank you. Okay, let's keep it going. Here we go. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? Hey, Tony. My name is Jaden, and I'm calling from Sacramento. Jaden, before we... Uh, start your story or whatever you want to share. I have a freaky question I have to ask you. Yep, I got it. Here you go. Would you buy a doll that you knew was haunted? No, nah, never. <laughs> okay, great. great. <laughs> there you go. Uh, go. The platform is yours. Go ahead. I uh, actually have a question. Well, have you seen the movie Signs, Tony? One of my favorite movies. All right, so my question for you, because it, it prefaces a little story I'm going to say, is uh, Mel Gibson asked him if he believes in coincidences or miracles. And I want to ask you, what do you believe in coincidences or miracles? There are no coincidences. Do I believe in miracles? Yes. All right, well, I had DM'd you before uh, about the Bible talk. I told you I came from, you know, like four generations of atheists and my story is it's it's a coincidence when um when I was 17 I'm 21 right now me and my two friends you know and I'm gonna just be honest we all three of us were on acid we were standing outside yes waiting to do something and this guy I call him a dope fiend you know he rode by a bike and he circled back and he went up to my friend and he told him he needed to talk to his mom. And we were like kind of freaked out because it was random. It was late at night. And he told him, he said, you need to talk to your mom. And my, and my, he like, my, we asked him like, do you know this guy? And he said, like, no, like, I don't know who this dude is. And my friend, he hadn't seen his mom in a long time. Cause you know, she was on meth and stuff. So it was weird that he said that. Yeah. And no less than about, you know, three weeks later, um, I dropped my friend off and I don't know why, Tony, but I always would kick it with my friend. And this one time I was dropping him off and I don't know why I just didn't go, Tony. I just, I don't know why. I don't know. And he died that night, uh, in the apartment, uh, uh, fentanyl. Yeah, wow. and like I said, me coming from atheist, you know, everything's a coincidence. It's like, you know, growing up when I watched that movie signs, I said, Oh, I believe in coincidences, you know? But after these experiences, it was just, it was stuff that was so weird. To, it was just, was, it, I couldn't explain it. You know, I mean. Uh, and, you know, my question to you is, what, you know, what are your thoughts? I still believe that there are no coincidences, okay? I, I, I remember you from Instagram, if I'm correct, if it was you, because I remember that message. But I, I haven't seen you in a while. Did you log off your Instagram? Yeah, I completely deactivated. I'm off. Okay. 
And you know what? And do you, it was not too long ago I was looking for you. And because uh, I wanted to reach out and actually talk to you about that. I, I wanted you to talk to me about, you know, the generations of being an atheist. Um, but. Well, yeah. Um, I, you know, I just, I grew up single mom. She's an atheist. My grandpa, he was an atheist. His, his dad was atheist. So I just, I didn't grow up around right. believing in that. But just going through life and having these like things that disturbed me. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I truly believe in God now, but. Okay. Look at. Do you mind if I screenshot your number and and shoot you a text maybe Monday? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do that right now because, um, I'm gonna say this. I don't believe you messaging me on Instagram and telling me that was a coincidence, and I don't believe you calling tonight was a coincidence. So, I'm gonna leave it there, and we'll talk a little bit more when we have a little bit more time. So, but I, I want to thank you for being transparent and being honest about you know your family and your friend and what happened. So. But we'll end it on that. Yes, sir. Okay. Be expecting a text from me. All right. Have a good night, Tony. You too. Okay. Okay, Alex, that was it. And uh, I want to thank everybody that called in, everybody who participated, everybody who called in. I want to end it on that good note because I remember this individual. uh, He was always on my my stories, and he would always comment on my stories. And... um, um, when he sent me that message, I was like, wow, you know what? Let me reach out to him. But when I tried to find him again, he was completely logged off. So I want to thank you, caller. Let me see. Uh, I know I saved your number. Um, um, let me double check. You guys want to make sure. Yes, I got it right here. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank everybody. Is there anything that we need to uh, Go ahead. Okay, Alex Cervantes, job four ninety nine. Alex Cervantes, thank you. And is that a new member? No. Okay. Uh, uh, what? Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, you know what? I want to thank once again all of our members. Uh, we're going to continue to drop more content for the membership. Uh, um, for those that have become members, um, I'm going to be going to s- several locations that many of you guys have DM me on the Freaky Tales podcast Instagram page. Uh, a lot of you guys wanted the drum barracks here in the city of Wilmington. Some of you guys wanted the 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 Wilmington uh, Banning Mansion. I'm going to be going there. I'm going to be going to a, a certain place in San Pedro and then start heading out towards L.A. Um, but I will be filming it. I will be narrating it. And uh, it's going to be only exclusive to the members. So I want to thank everybody on the live chat. I want to thank everybody who decided not to be on the live chat, especially the callers, man. You know what? I truly appreciate that when the callers call, and they say, thank you, Tony, for creating a, a platform. You know, we truly enjoy it. You know, it's just a beautiful thing when the things that you do, you know, are, are truly appreciated. And those calls are truly appreciated. Um, people that are commenting positive things and that are just having fun on the live chat. That's what it's there for. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank everybody who liked. And I want to thank people who disliked. I want to thank people who shared. I want to thank people just in general, because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here. So other than that, let me go ahead and thank my team. I want to thank the Hip Hop Jedi. I want to thank my son, B. Scanless, for helping me promote this. Also, I want to thank uh, Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise. I want to thank Norbert News with Norbies. I want to thank Marvelous, Marvelous Inc. and Magic Girl, a.k.a. Forever Genesis. If you guys didn't hear the very beginning on her phone call, Make sure you guys go back to the very first phone call. She touched on the topic of exploding caskets, exploding caskets. She's going to have a different type, a very unique type of podcast, uh, type of things that nobody's touching on. That's what's going to make her different from every other podcast. So I'm encouraging you guys. We're going to put it on the, uh, we don't have it on the live chat. We'll put it on the description where you guys can go and follow her on that. Other than that, uh, you know what? It's the weekend, Friday, Saturday, um, Sunday, and then Monday and Tuesday, it's Halloween. So I'm building uh, my grandbaby's little graveyard here, builds a uh, family memory. So I want to ask all you parents, if you're going to take your kids out trick-or-treating, make sure you guys, you know, take care of them. I don't have to tell you that, but I just feel, uh, um, I just feel the need to do that, being a parent, being a grandparent. Let us take care of our kids. You know, let us take care of the children, even if they're not ours. 
Let us protect, protect children. Be safe out there. Much love and respect for you guys. Have a blessed night, and we'll see you guys here next week. Thank you.